Where are those pants from, Gene? The Dude, drip on this guy. The I can't, drip. I can't tell you. This guy is dripping. Oh, you're going to gatekeep your pants? I am. I'm going to gatekeep everything now. I told Dang you gatekeep. Although this is from this is from Get Bored to Make Stuff. So if you want this, <laughs> same dog. I took the extra one over there because I'm cold. Uh, I told Sabria. I said, I said like Gene has a lot of drip. I said the other day, and she's like, "What?" Is she like, "Is he okay?" And I was like, "He has a lot. Gene has a lot of drip." I'm like, "What are you talking? What? He has a lot of drip." She's like, "What are you saying?" She had no idea what drip was. I'm like he's but he like, has, he's clothed. Well, her he's especially well. though I understand because she's not like seeing like us every single day. We're always like interacting with so many different people. Yeah, because she's usually at home. Yeah, so. she doesn't know all the Gen Z lingo like we do. Well, we don't know anything either. There's so many things that are said now. That I'm like, what are you saying? Yeah, it's getting pretty ridiculous. Even like they're out of touch too because they're, they're with us all the time. Like Chad, <laughs> <Yeah>. Cyrus, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> we absorbed getting, you we're guys. We're taking them out of yeah, Gen Z culture. Exactly. <laughs> Good for them. So proud of them. <laughs> yeah. Wow, they're so much better off now. Yeah. But Is she, what you'd say if you were like an but, old jaded millennial. Yeah. <laughs> oh, her follow up then was like, he does have drip. <laughs> and I was like, really? yeah, he like thrifts all the time and he's got cool shoes and Emblion Dior. <laughs> It is, you know, when you say it like that, it's actually so funny that drip is like either three dollar outfit, yeah, or sixty five dollar hat. hat, yeah, and yeah. most of the time it's a combination of both. It's, it's true like, though. I it's found true. these pants in it's a true. dumpster, but yeah. this baseball has a hundred dollars. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Rally Caps. It's a podcast for artists, entrepreneurs, and everybody in between. I'm Steven. I'm Eric. And I'm Gene. And today we are coming in hot with a second part to a two-part mini-series that we're doing on the show right now about creativity needing boundaries. Last week we discussed specific projects that the three of us have worked on and kind of dissected some of the technicalities of those things and basically explored like the benefits of maybe boring work or some client work that you're not super happy with or, you know, kind of taking on things that are either very time restrictive or um, budget restrictive and trying to find like the goodness in those things and mm -hmm. how you can learn something from those and take away something of quality that you can integrate into your business and treat as like a learning lesson for your career. If you are interested in listening to that episode, that's just last week. So just bop back one episode and check that out bop. if you want more bop context it. for this episode. Twist it. Shake it. T turn it? Turn Is it? it? Turn it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Vroom. Um, yeah. So that was last week's episode. Uh, this week, we're discussing more of the interpersonal side of creativity and boundaries. Um, we're going to do that by kind of opening up the floor to have a very like chill chat about the pros and cons of both working from home and working in a collaborative studio like we all currently do. Um, we think that's a good spot because I feel like a lot of people are either currently working from home mm -hmm. uh, or they are in a, a co-working space of some sort or maybe interested in pursuing the studio that we have. Uh, so we just want to, I don't know, have a very like low-key conversation. Uh, you guys have said a lot lately that you've been really enjoying the more relaxed episodes, mm -hmm. kind of conversational, very very chill. We talk about jeans, pants. We talk about jeans, pants, and the Bulls <sighs> halftime show. Mm -hmm. um, but why are we so happy today, Stephen? Um, we are. Yeah, I'm happy that we're doing this episode right now for like a vibey episode because Ooh. the tension that has released from our collective shoulders is wild because we've exported the final version of the documentary that will be aired in Franklin, Tennessee. Yay! It's the clapping one. It is yeah. oh, my random choice. I thought you were going to do the air horn. I was like, I can't do that one. But I was like, which one is the clapping one? The documentary is done. It's done. It's the final underscore final underscore one underscore two underscore <laughs> maybe <laughs> final the dot fi exe. <laughs> it is the final that's the actual being file, shown. The actual file this name is, is, is moving still Franklin underscore O2. Okay, yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's the file that we're copying to like a hundred SSDs right now yeah. that we're going to tote down to Franklin, Tennessee to Currently, play. Oh, it's supposed to be uploading to Vimeo, but I just realized I've closed my laptop. Yeah. Don't uh, open your, go open your laptop. <laughs> um, right yeah, we are, we're thrilled right now. Yeah. It feels like a very appropriate time to record an episode like this because 
we're just happy. Like, it feels very good. We're recording this um, for your context. What's today? Thursday? So it's mm-hmm. uh, two days before <laughs> the premiere, the seventh, yeah. which is crazy. March 7th. Um, so, yeah, uh, for any of you who are listening, oh, I'm, you know, you're not going to hear this until... After Afterwards, the premiere. So yeah. never mind. Afterwards. If you were at the premiere, yeah. it was great to see you. Yes. Had so much fun talking about that thing we discussed. Oh no. What? No. On Earth? Oh. Wait, what? That's so out of pocket. <laughs> Why? Dear listener, Eric just walked in with the most Blade Runner-esque looking glasses. So you should hop on Where YouTube. Where did you and find those? This. Oh, those were from your real. <laughs> I bought these with my own money. You said these are mine as if you wear them every day. <laughs> I thought they were for your kids, they but they're for you. They change colors. Chat approves. They Wait, do they, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. play the, the music. music. It's really unfortunate if you only listen on Spotify. Yeah, you're not going to. There we go. But now you have music to listen to. It's going. Today's the day of celebration. I'm not hiding it. Today's the day of celebration, folks. F- yeah, we finished our first movie. We did. <laughs> I can't look at you at this. It's I'm still ma- going, the song. I'm going to make you. It's still I'm going. I'm going to make yeah. you look at me like this the entire episode. I can't even now. see your eyeballs. Good. All right, cool. All right. So um, <laughs> the doc's the doc's done. Mm-hmm. The doc's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is so nice. It is lovely. I Even it, saying it out loud doesn't feel real. It, uh, it feels so wild. The first time we saw it in October when we finally exported in 4K instead of just a proxy export was mind blowing to see it in full res because we're just like we're shoot we're going off proxies in the edit the entire time even full res of that's only 720 so yeah. you can't really get a full grasp of how crisp and beautiful the final will be and then we exported the whole thing and at that point it was uh, like six or seven minutes longer than it is now yeah but to see the volume of that mm. like an hour and 20 minutes of full 4k basically the right color and everything was yeah. like, Ugh. but even now, now that it's polished and looking that way, I was yeah. just scrubbing through it this morning and was like, Oh my God. It's so it's, it is pretty wild to spend so much time with footage that, you know, looks good, but to preview it at like the one sixteenth preview off of a, like we were using proxies, but even then we were still not previewing in full resolution from yeah. that. Mm. It was just like, it felt so pixelated at times. I was like, mm. all right, we're just editing off of feelings and general shapes and colors. Yeah. But to see like the actual, <clears throat> actual final result is very cool. It's yeah. very rewarding. Uh, and we're so proud of what we made. Like, like, Unbelievably proud. It's a freaking movie. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. How do you feel, Gene? I feel great. Excited to finally have people watch it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got some special friends flying in for it too. You seem, yeah. cool. you seem so excited. I'm thrilled. No, I am. It's It's been like... <laughs> <laughs> I, Yes. <laughs> no, I'm excited. It's Dude, uh, cool down over there. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Got You're on fire. fire. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm excited for. Uh, I think the the movie itself has been so much more involved than just. It's been two years, so I think like it's mm-hmm. been such a long process. Even watching you guys in the post process of just really like hammering away at the edit, I think it's so unlike anything we or you guys have worked on. And I think like most people who may be watching who have YouTube channels. You're working on like an eight to 10 minute video at best on average, but this is like, it's a movie. So Mm -hmm. I think for me, at least watching you guys and just thinking about the premiere this Saturday, just really excited to see people watch it. I'm really nervous too for not only like the actual event itself, but even just how it's going to be received and just Mm. as more eyes get on it and as more people start talking about it on the internet, just like really nervous about what's going to (laughs) be said. Mm. Um, so I'm excited, but there's a lot of other emotions I'm feeling as we kind of gear up for this weekend. For sure. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very fair. There's a lot of people in a room at once. We're currently at like 240 mm-hmm. people. Uh, yeah, with, with our yeah. group. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around that. Yeah. yeah. And we don't, yeah, we don't know all the ticket sales yep. until the theater updates us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So, you know, biggest screen, biggest venue, <laughs> biggest format that will be seeing and hearing this in Mm -hmm. so i'm sure even though we say you know we have the final version of the doc we're gonna watch it and be like "Eh." we're like oh there's a lot that we have to you know finesse for larger screens because that's just like a different format that we're not used to but yeah it is it it it, i feel where you're coming from about like a little bit of apprehension about the weekend itself and i'm trying so hard to just be like you know what let's just lean into having fun Mm -hmm. like it's it's like a a conscious thing i'm having to tell myself just be like you know what People are going to think what they think. And 
I hope for the most part, people are going to love it. Uh, but more than anything, it's something that we should be proud of yeah. and just like get to finally celebrate a yeah. little bit. Like, yeah, it, we deserve that. Yeah. You know, like I think in the, the most special thing I think coming out of it is I think there's going to be lots of lots of tears shed watching it knowing the context of mm -hmm. uh, what the resolution of the story is. And I think a lot of people aren't necessarily expecting that to hit them, especially if they have personal trauma in their lives that's similar or adjacent to Joe's. Yeah. There's going to mm -hmm. be, there's going to be a lot of people who are just like rocked. Um, yeah. That's my guess. Yeah. And so I'm very interested to see in the Q and a how mm. everyone kind of, responds in that way mm -hmm. and especially with matthias being on the q a panel right who plays arguably one of the most important roles in the film yeah how he responds to some of those people's reactions as well totally i feel like it's gonna in part turn into a therapy oh, session yeah. a little bit yeah yeah because matthias is a therapist yeah and um i hope so yeah it's and that i think that's i i honestly the Q and A personally, I, I kind of just want to take a back seat and just experience it and talk as little <laughs> as I possibly can. Oh, I'm just gonna be nursing some Centauri on the side yeah. and just like I'm gonna talk the most, guys. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's a just like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Uh, 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 uh. Steven told me as long as I don't meow, we'll be in a good spot. I did say that. That's oh, true. I won't meow. <laughs> I want you to meow. No, no. It was like a deep moment of someone's childhood trauma, and you're just like, meow. <laughs> and then Chris, just in the back of the audience, is like, ha! Ah! <laughs> He's like, Gene meowed. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait to see Chris. He thought we were totally gassing him up in the text the other day. We were oh, like, yeah, we're yeah. so excited to see, like we're yeah. arguably just as excited to see you as we are for the weekend. He's yeah. like, guys, chill. We're like, no, no, no you chill. Chris Chu like, is one of the best humans alive. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, that was the first time we revealed to him that, cause he didn't know that in the oh, film, oh. he has a single bead of sweat rolling down oh, his yeah. cheek <laughs> in his interview. Bro. The man was sweating. And like, I'm not going to go in there and mask out a, a, <laughs> like frame by frame a, some sweat on your face. So we just left it in there and he was just like, oh, oh rip. He's oh. Like, and then I think he said something to the effect of like, like, as long as you can't see my soaked shirt. My shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He's like filming in his his apart his NYC apartment in the middle of August yeah. with like three layers on. Yeah, yeah. we're like, dude, you look pretty decked out for this interview. <laughs> He's like, hot. He's like, no, I'll be good. I'll be good. <laughs> hour quick, later. Quick functional aside, how did we do that interview, Stephen? Okay, so yeah, that was a pretty fun component. We conducted Chris's interview. It was a self tape on his part. Yeah. So he had a, a combo FX six FX three dual angle setup that he prepared for himself. He lit his scene. He framed everything. And he FaceTimed us uh -huh. for sent us, us to, test images. He did send us test images too. And then we FaceTimed him and then conducted the interview over FaceTime. But he treated it as if we were in the room. I think he even like put his phone kind of like he did. by the camera. He could, he could see us off camera, yeah. but we were muted. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that way our audience. Yeah. 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 Um, which worked beautifully. I'll yeah. be honest. I forget when Chris's parts come up in the film that we weren't there. Yeah. Like it, it looks so much like a yeah. setup that we would have done for an interview that right. I'm like, oh yeah, that was just like, that was part of the film. Right. We weren't there. Well, that's what's so cool <laughs> about doing a film in our niche because people with resources like that mm -hmm. can just do it remotely, which is wild. Or if, you know, like my buddy Ben who shot Joe's Central Park workout as yeah. well, yep. just kind of <clears throat> allowing other people to to yeah. do some proxy work off off to the side yep. in a different city. It's like, it's not worth it for us to go all the way out there. Mm -hmm. But like Chris is such a incredible filmmaker and yeah. he has the tools and mm -hmm. like the fact that he was like, no, I'll do like dual camera, dual angle. Like I've, I've got all this like great audio, everything. Like he just, he knocked out of the park. That was great. He understood the assignment for he sure. He did mm -hmm. and he delivered chef. With his sweat. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like Carmi. Okay. Well, uh, so anyway, so back to the actual <laughs> we'll topic see. of the episode. <laughs> um, I mean, this is this is great. This is this is all yeah. part of it too, right? It's it's um, it's interpersonal stuff. It's it's why um, like the boundaries of like in person mm -hmm. work in a studio uh, versus maybe like the more uh, isolating solo work at home 
what we've, we've all, we've all done yeah. both. We've done work yeah. from home. We've done the studio for a number of years now. Um, what are you guys thoughts on that? I, Cause like, especially like in regards to like the, the boundaries that those different things provide. Yeah. Right. Like maybe let's yeah, start yeah. like work from home. Yeah. Like what that's like. Yeah. I, I would, you know, like, um, to like say it concisely, I would say that working from home has its advantages too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that comes to mind for me now that I'm in a season of life where my kids are at school is productivity. Yeah. Uh, not that I don't love being here in the studio, but depending on the day and the volume of people, my productivity <laughs> plummets. Gene has AirPods Max. <laughs> just dra- the, I mean, you're on like, the floor doing tech deck yesterday. <laughs> 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 Literally, I turned around at one point. You were like, like side saddle on the ground. Woo. <laughs> it's like, and that's the fun. Like, even if like talking about the doc, I don't think the doc would have happened if we didn't have this space together, working so closely together. For so sure. like, I won't go too far into like studio, like being in a studio quite yet. But as far as working from home, um, years and years ago, when our kids were really young, it was really hard. It was really hard to have a desk set up in the dining room and then in the kitchen and then trying one of the bedrooms. And um, I think there's a season to a lot of different things. And I do foresee someday I will probably work out of a home office more than a studio. I think especially mm-hmm. as we get mm-hmm. older and as a lot of our group begins to go back to um, East Coast or mm-hmm. to the South, whatever that looks like, I do foresee inevitably that my working style will change again. Mm-hmm. But for this season of life, it's been so great and so fulfilling to work alongside people so closely. And I always describe to people, you guys are like friends, but coworkers too. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just like I'm going to a WeWork, working by myself in a co- communal space. Yeah, yeah right. It's very much collective. Um, but like homework, like working from home for me was really difficult a few years ago. But like I said earlier, I do see... Uh, a world where that will become the norm for me again someday. Yeah. It's interesting because I feel like the the split between like work from home versus in the studio is like exactly what you said. It's like when you're in a studio, you are with your friends mm-hmm. and they are your coworkers. Mm-hmm. So you don't ever have to like seek out community. Mm-mm. But yeah. when you're working from home, it is so solo that I feel like it's it's easier for you to like invite people in or yeah. for you to leave because you're just like so desperate to see people. Like you just want to be around others. So you're not like as concerned about like needing to like guard your time because you feel like you have an abundance of it because mm-hmm. you're just sitting in it on your own mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. I feel like I'd like another definition of boundaries, maybe for the, the solo work specifically, is how you do treat your time when you don't have the accountability of a studio yeah. space. Yeah. Like what boundaries do you put up for yourself when you're working from home alone, when there's no one right next to you looking over your shoulder, seeing what you're up to? Like how do you guard your time and use it well when you're at home and don't have someone else keeping you accountable to actually getting your work done? Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember in 2020 with so much work from home, I would find myself so often spending way too much time watching YouTube yeah. and then uh, mm. justifying it. And it was like, I'm doing research. <laughs> R&D. Hey, listen, this is a peer-reviewed which, podcast. Which, I mean, like... <laughs> this is research. <laughs> Funny enough, like, that's kind of a little bit true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But mostly not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those were the days where I felt that yeah. a ton. Yeah. Mm. But on the few days I work from home these days, I'm so busy that my work from home days are so productive mm-hmm. because I'm just like in the zone editing something with a strong, like really concrete task. And I'm just locked in the bedroom mm-hmm. and talking to no one mm-hmm. and just like just jamming it out. Yep. Um, so that's that's really efficient for me but it's not something i want all the time mm-hmm. at all like, yeah. I, I think we also thrive it's clear that we thrive way more in the studio setting mm-hmm. for the functional pieces of you know if we talk about editing the documentary i have my entire nas sitting next to right. my desk which we're pulling from especially in these later days of, of doing final edits and pulling from raw footage and needing that literal 14 terabytes of footage mm-hmm. That's not something I can just be toting around on, you know, like four or five lay C's. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that along with, you know, obviously doing what we're doing right now, having dedicated spaces, this whole studio alone to mm. 
to have as a functional tool to create things, to have sets, to have all the gear that we have up here. Think of all the gear that we have downstairs or mm -hmm. if I needed to scan film. You have options. Mm -hmm. You have options to jump into work. So like those days when you're sitting alone, you have nothing to do and you choose to watch YouTube, you feel so much more convicted to, to, to not do that in the studio because mm -hmm. other people around you are working mm -hmm. and you're like, there's an abundance of things I can do right now because right. of the resources that are all around me. So there's no excuse. Mm -hmm. Were there any like pragmatic things that either of you guys did when you were in work from home days that you would do to kind of kind of guard your time a little bit? Like, did you use like any like timers? Did you have any like app blockers or like time limits set on your phone or anything like that? Uh, I didn't. I mean, it was the last time I was like working from home was pre creative club, which was nearly seven years ago. Now this may um, Reg regularly. Working yeah. So home. like for, That's and crazy. that was again, like my kids were super, super young. Um, we didn't even have our second yet. So, uh, the biggest thing I had to work on was like communicating with Lois, my wife about, um, like scheduling and boundaries and giving each other yeah. ample time to work. Yeah. But beyond that, it didn't, for me at least, it didn't matter what systems I built. Like it wasn't going to help me very much because of my actual situation. Hmm. Um, hence like why a lot of us got the studio. Cause a lot of us, our families were growing. We were, uh, we had all had young children and it was just almost impossible to work unless you're working super early in the morning or really late at night, which is what I find myself doing during like heavy wedding seasons was yeah. just like same working whenever I could barely sleeping. Um, but during the day itself, I wasn't working that efficiently. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like my running career now <clears throat> could not have existed <clears throat> in my twenties with that very thing. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't getting oh, enough totally. sleep to recover. Like I wouldn't have even been able to do it. Like I would just yeah. have been too exhausted. Mm -hmm. So the, the feelings that I have about like, Oh, what could have been if I started when I was 24, but I mean, I did what I had to do in my business to be able to support my family. So mm -hmm. I have zero regrets in that regard, but same, like I would be, especially when I was teaching and doing weddings, yeah, and I would just be editing weekday evenings into the night, and I would be shooting on the weekends, and I would just be fitting it in whatever wherever I could. When I was growing the YouTube channel, I would literally, I feel like once a week I would stay up till three to five a.m. finishing mm -hmm. videos mm -hmm. overnight, and just getting them. And I, I didn't need to do that, but for me it was like if I'm going to get this done and get it out. I just need to charge through the night and finish it. Mm -hmm. And I just had so much steam that I was like, just go. And I think a lot of people would look at that and just be like, that doesn't have any discipline, the blah, 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 blah. And, it, and in my mind, I was like, I know this isn't a sustainable approach. I'm just in like a poor gas on the fire kind of season right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Knowing that, because I never do that anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. I haven't done that for two years. So yeah, it's... It's super interesting because in those quiet moments in the middle of the night, I can work unbelievably efficiently. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's another thing. Um, working at crazy odd hours, like I thrive by getting up at three or four a.m. to finish an edit mm -hmm. because I'm just sitting on the couch in a quiet house and really no one's active on the internet either. Mm -hmm. So that's huge to go off of your question i've never really dabbled in any kind of like productivity apps or mm -hmm. anything but even here and regularly i actually just switched to having a work mode because oh full, on your phone full yeah. do not disturb was actually biting me because mm -hmm. i was missing phone calls and mm -hmm. important work texts yeah. and yep. stuff yeah so now i have work mode set in where i have uh, a, a small group of people that like work contacts that i can do yeah uh, where I'm not losing it. Cause even Sabria, like she would be texting me in the middle of a work day with something important with mm -hmm. the kids yep. and I wouldn't see it for two or three hours. So that's been really helpful for me as well, just yeah. to have those parameters. No, those custom modes on iPhone, mm -hmm. I'm sure Android has something similar, but it, it's amazing how, how like fine tuned they mm -hmm. can become. Yeah. And you can really, I think those are probably the best ways to like help during work days and like, provide accountability for you if you are working from home or working from a studio either way i think it's just a helpful way to kind of lock in so that your phone isn't this just 
colorful, vibrating distraction that's like always trying to suck your attention back into it. Something yeah. I heard recently is a lot of people are turning their phones into <clears throat> black and white. Grayscale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Which is uh, psychologically like fascinating to, yeah. to see like the impact of yeah. that because of how stimulating color is and how boring your phone suddenly yeah. becomes if it's all just black and white. Which is very interesting. Yeah. Which is no shade to black and white photography by any means. I love black and yeah. white photography. Don't yeah. tell Braxton. Don't tell Braxton or Chris. They can't. They can't find out. Grayscale. <laughs> <laughs> Grayscale is so much less stimulating. That's why I shoot in color. It, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> sorry, Braxton. <laughs> sorry, Chris. Um, no, it's like it is. It's, no, it's yeah, I agree. It, it's I very agree. cool. There's yeah. a reason why all these apps are so vibrant in color. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, did you do something similar on the East Coast before you moved here? Um, work modes, yeah. You did. Um, I don't think they were quite the same amount of customization oh, uh, like two and a half years ago, yeah. I don't think. Um, but I've also used like an assortment of uh, timers and like physical things either like on my desk or on my computer that I would set for myself to create work sprints throughout the day. Like I really enjoy working in sprints like that where you set like a 30 minute timer, you click it and you go. And is you that what your little circle thing is mm -hmm. on your desk? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, it's really designed to just like be that, uh, the reason I got one that's separate from my computer or phone is because I wanted something that is not potentially Analog. another distraction, right? Yeah. It's like even just opening up my phone to set a timer yeah. invites the possibility yep. Yep. of something taking my attention away. Um, so yeah, using that physical timer on my, it was like an $8 little, little clicky timer. It's incredible. Um, just click it to go 30 minutes and it's one task that I'm on. There's nothing else. Uh, and I, I really enjoy working like that. I think it's a, for me at least it, it clicks. Uh, and it's literally. just, a, it, cl it, it literally clicks. <laughs> that's good. Um, Thanks. yeah. That's good. So that, yeah, that, that's probably my favorite way of it, like a very practical, easy thing to do. Uh, but yeah, that's, yeah. I, I think something I know I definitely struggled with when I was working from home. Like yeah. there, there's no yeah. silver bullet to figure this out. Like one size fits all kind of thing. Um, but it's helpful to like acknowledge it and just talk about it openly because it, it can be kind of a make or break thing. I think early on, like yeah. if you, if you find yourself wasting time so much, yeah. it's like just refocusing and recentering on that goal of whatever that thing that you're trying to achieve is, yeah. I think it's really important. The flip side of the studio though is, is that it could just be so. Yeah, let's talk yeah, about let's, that. Yeah, let's talk about it. Because I think like yeah. so many, we've been on the other side for so long now. Yeah. And I think one of the questions we've all collectively gotten over the years, probably the most is like, how do you guys do that? How do you, do <laughs> How'd you guys start Critical? How do you guys start Rally Caps? How do you guys start like a communal thing? And yeah. I think that uh, so many artists, creatives aspire to be in a mm -hmm. communal space like ours. But there are definitely some, <laughs> why am I smiling? I Bro, <laughs> you're grinning like the Joker over there. Like I think no one talks about <laughs> the actual reality of being in a communal space too yeah. with your friends because it's not always easy nor is it always productive either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like no one tough. talks about that. Everyone's it, like, oh, yeah, yeah community. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, but there are things you have to also sacrifice to be part of a community. A hundred percent. Yeah, it is It is a wild privilege to have this space. Yeah. These spaces for the three of us, at least, yeah. you know, two studios. Um, but it is. it comes with a lot of responsibility. That's why we have this studio. That's, yeah, no, that's literally <laughs> we got the <laughs> yeah, second <it's> one. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> But going going um. into your work day, the expectation of that you might be really focused that day, but you have to understand that you might get interrupted. Yeah. And yeah. really kind of just having enough grace and empathy to just, okay, maybe I will just pause for a second to have this conversation because I do yep. think it's important to have, to have those relational, you know, components. interactions yeah. and components. But... We also have unspoken and spoken rules about mm -hmm. productivity. Mm -hmm. Headphones mean leave me alone. Mm -hmm. And we all have been there where we Most do. Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time they do. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty. <laughs> guilty of that. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> or unless we need to get Bean's attention. <laughs> yeah, everyone just screams. Bean, Bean, Bean. But we've all all been there as well. Yeah. Me, me more. No, me on the receiving end of <laughs> Stephen just completely ignoring <laughs> with the headphones on, pretending that he can't hear. Like for sure, we all do that as well. Dog. Like, 
I don't even want to out myself, but half the time I don't even have my headphones plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just be real about that. I'll come clean. I'm not even listening to anything. I'll hear people be like, hey, Steven, can I? Oh, oh, he's got headphones on. I'll be like, yeah, I do. I'm not listening to anything, but I am wearing them right now. <laughs> I'm just going to start saying outrageous things <laughs> to you and just try to get you to laugh because <laughs> I know you're ignoring me. But like, that's like hey, <laughs> butt cheeks. <laughs> oh, you got to try harder than butt cheeks. Oh. No, it's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Um, no, you're right. It's like, it is such a delicate balance. Yeah. It's like, it's like a dance that I feel like all of us have to perform together. Yeah. Because you're right. Like th there should be like grace on both ends. Like sometimes, yes, I do want to field a question. I can, I can create a little asset for you. I can mock <clears> up <throat> a thumbnail. I can do yeah. this, that, the other. Cause like we're all on the same team. Like we are all trying to actively help one another, but then on the like askers and it's like, like I want to have enough respect for everyone also to know that they have stuff that they have to get done. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to be distracting them from those things yeah. so that they have to bring that work home and like ultimately like spend yeah. three hours that night catching up on what they couldn't do that day because it, you know, things spiraled or what, or whatever. And I think like we all again, kind of like have an unspoken agreement that, you know, some days are kind of like, fun days everyone's mm -hmm. in a mood everyone's having yeah. a good mm -hmm. kind of day to like lay back a yep. little bit more and we're all cool with that like everyone contributes equally and we just want to have that together and those are really good bonding days too because yeah. like there should be that relational component like mm -hmm. you, we should be investing in one another on a personal level or even just like hey i'm going to trader joe's yeah. you don't need anything but you're going to come on the right. walk anyway yep Yep. Uh, Which I've, dude, those are some of the best parts of, really of being in a communal space is like even just the accountability, like move, move, get, get eat, outside, eat, eat, drink. drink water, like sunshine, like all, all yeah. the stuff that Steps. can very easily be neglected if yeah. you're on your own and you're like, oh, I just oh, I power through this edit or whatever. It's yeah. like, no, no, no. You'll actually do better on that yeah. if you take 20 minutes to go on a walk out and back and feel refreshed. I'm really guilty of that. I feel like some of those of really, no, the oh. really fun days where things are happening, I'll still just be like. You have to get it done, though. Yeah. Like, there, there's a balance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, now that the dock is over, honestly, it feels like that part of my life is opening up so much mm -hmm. more because it was so, like, mm -hmm. these deadlines, mm -hmm. got to commit time. Mm -hmm. it, we need to get it done. And now that that is just I mean, we have all the other components of needing to do premieres and emails and marketing and all that. Yeah. That feels very different to me than the creative energy it takes to work on an edit. Mm -hmm. So that feels like now I'll be moving forward into more of having a looser schedule in the studio, which is really always what I want. Mm -hmm. I don't really... I That's what I don't enjoy in a co-working space is when I have tight deadlines, I'm rushed to finish a project right. and I can't enjoy the company around me. Mm -hmm. That's what, yeah. And so building systems in place where I can extend that yeah. out yep. Yep. and have free time to engage in other things and just like breathe more. Yeah. Uh, even though I know I work really well on a tight timeline, really find discipline and being able to lengthen that out mm -hmm. more. That's just like the nature of being business owners too. There's seasons of pushing and pulling. Yeah. Uh, and then with the studio, like how that affects the studio is like mu very much give and take. Um, I think like sometimes the day to day can be frustrating when you're really busy. You mm -hmm. just feel like you're drowning or mm -hmm. man, like I'm not really enjoying the people around me or maximizing uh, the space. But I think it's, there will be a time when this is no longer like yeah. when creative club is no longer that. Yes. Uh, Cause like that's inevitable <laughs> too. There yeah. will be like people's lives are changing. People will move. Um, we're changing, but th there's like no doubt that all of us will look back on these years very fondly. And mm -hmm. even if those, like even if those day to day, like moments feel very frustrating, mm -hmm. I think our journeys as like creatives and artists, um, definitely like when you look at the long term, mm -hmm. has been, greatly impacted in the most positive way being together mm -hmm. absolutely and i do think there are strong benefits to being next to your friends other very talented artists and creatives people who are very skilled at what they do 
um, than someone working solo individually on their own, which yeah. again, like you may be more productive in that way. But my argument to that is like you can 10 X your learning abilities and your skills by being around other people who are very talented and skilled yeah. as opposed to trying to watch a YouTube video. And then you get sucked into like watching random videos too that are not about mm -hmm. what you wanted to learn in the first place. Mm -hmm. no. it, so I, I actually wanted to mention this to you guys because I want to do like a whole other episode of it, but I've been talking nonstop about um, Jacob Collier's episode on Colin Samir. That yeah. just dropped Started earlier this week. To today, yeah. um, I, I'm not even kidding. I would be down to literally do like a whole dissection of that episode as an episode on Rally Caps because there's so much gold that Jacob uh, drops in that episode. One of those things that I just want to peel apart now because I feel like it's relevant is that um, I think kind of towards the later half of the episode, they talk about productivity and like mm. how to, you know, get things done and, and be efficient and specifically within the um, regards to music uh, that Jacob makes. And uh, he, he said something to the effect of, um, I refuse to believe that the fastest way is always the best way. I refuse mm. to believe the fastest way is always the best In his deep way. bass voice. He has the most yeah. gorgeous voice. It's just very, yeah. very sing song. It's so deep. Here. It's very unique. It, it's like yeah. a British Sam Elkins. <laughs> <laughs> Like, actually, like his voice yeah. is so deep. It's yeah. crazy. I just wanted to sneak my so Jacob Collier impression in there somewhere. Yeah, British. <laughs> very, it was very British. Say, say the phrase again. Uh, what I said? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I refuse to believe that the uh, Fast. best way is the fastest, fastest way. way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Or that the fastest way is the, is the you talk about, because like yeah. he was using examples of like, you know, it's not, or I think Samir actually was like, you know, um, if we talk about efficiency, like, being efficient isn't always inherently good. Yeah. Like it's not efficient to go to a concert to listen to music. It's efficient to listen to it on Spotify at home. Yeah. yeah. It's not efficient to park at the venue and get inside and stand in a bad seat maybe and like hear things that are not mixed properly or whatever, you know? Um, and like that struck a deep chord with me because like as a musician, especially I'm like, Oh, like I understand like the power of, live music and how much more special it is to experience it mm -hmm. in, in a live setting. I think most people can relate to like, on like the audience side of things too, like being in the room, it always feels more electric yeah. than what, like watching or listening to it on yeah. Spotify or somewhere. Oh, yeah. um, and that just like was a really, I don't know, good perspective shift a little bit. It was like, oh, it doesn't have to be efficient for it to be good. And sometimes like the winding road to get to the place that you wanted to get <coughs> is actually a better way to get there because of all the experiences that you picked up along that route, For sure. whatever that end goal is. Um, but I thought that that in particular is like so relevant to our conversation today. Cause I think like exactly what you said, Gene is like, regardless of the distractions, like we're going to look back on this so fondly mm -hmm. because the studio is not forever. Mm -hmm. And, and when it ends, it would be nice for it to end in a way that we all look back on it we knew that we were like in the good old days mm -hmm. as, as Andy so famously said at the end of the yeah. office, like, mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're all very aware of what we have and how special it is. Yeah. And even sometimes when, you know, the days that are a little more frustrating that aren't as productive, that are a, a little, you know, kind of distracting, um, that even that is like part of that winding path that we're all on yeah. to get to whatever it is that we're headed towards. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a lot of inside, but oh, um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that was so transformative for me to see a brilliant mind take so long yeah. to make something. Right. And then just seeing how all the function, functional components of it had to happen over a long period of time. And, and even just the realization of seeing his facial hair and, and mm. head of hair grow. Mm -hmm. Like it mm. was there were clear natural indicators of how long it took him to produce these things. Right, right. And then you see the outtakes and you see all the stuff. And even inside the film, you can see uh, how he is. Who's someone, someone knocking? Someone's knocking. I don't know. Uh, you could see how he is taking so much time to set up a certain shot, mm -hmm. uh, dial in the lighting and the audio, how many takes he does mm -hmm. uh, to come up with a masterpiece like that. Mm -hmm. You even look at... Uh, white woman's Instagram, mm -hmm. that song, mm -hmm. the amount of scenes mm -hmm. he came up with just for one song mm -hmm. for three minutes, it had to have been 40 or 50 different scenes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that challenged my creative perspective a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I think really ultimately was what made me want to jump into challenging 
at least myself with something long form, mm-hmm. like a documentary. Mm-hmm. And then we did that. Mm-hmm. We actually did it. We did do it. Yeah. Huh? Gene, are you listening to music when your headphones are on? Or, or am I the only... Those aren't even real headphones. I just bought those off of eBay for five bucks. They're just a casing. <laughs> They're not real it's AirPods. Just the casing. No. Those AirPods Pros. Those are not AirPods. Those are wait, it's Chinese Pro? five dollar AirPod. Are they AirPod Pro Max? Pro Max. Isn't that what the full I name? No, it's some. Yeah, they were um, gifted. They're not real. They're not real. So They're not real. Doesn't even matter, guys. It's. <laughs> it's no, I am usually listening to music or like, um, yeah, like an interview or podcast. Yeah, yeah. I do love like learning in that way, like through audio. Yeah. I think part of it too, I think what actually would help with some of like the day to day distractions, because like we don't want to kill that vibe. We don't want to ruin the energy in the studio. We want to be able to Mm -hmm. feel comfortable like coming up to each other and having these conversations and stuff. But I feel like more intentional hang time would be beneficial for everyone as a full group. Mm -hmm. Or we're like, we're agreeing to take an hour you know, once a week for a lunch break, even mm-hmm. if it's like, Hey, the, like the Trader Joe's walk is like, everybody comes. Yeah. It's not an optional thing. It's like, we're all doing it together it's at a certain time. And we're making it more of an event to look forward to. Yeah. Cause that even like, that's where like, that's honestly where boundaries come back in. It's like when you put like a little more structure around some of these things, it's actually more freeing weirdly mm-hmm. enough. Like having, having just like all of the freedom can be actually like a bad thing mm-hmm. because without structure to guide some of it, it can just spiral yeah. and it can become frustrating. Yeah. Um, which is why I feel like boundaries and like structure and words like that, like shouldn't have, I feel like they kind of inherently have a negative connotation, but I don't think they should. Like, I feel like no. there is goodness to them if you just work them in, in an appropriate way. A balance of everything. Right. Yeah. Cause too much of it is like, you know, it's a, a dictatorship all, um, all of a sudden. Yeah. You right. Know? Uh, but having a rule where no dirty dishes go in the sink or on the kitchenette. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. That's, that's just a rule. Like we don't do that. We yep. clean the dishes mm-hmm. and we put them mm-hmm. away. This, yep. That's something we struggled with for months yep. of that happening over and over. Mm-hmm. But I even think of like what we're going to, I'm really excited for tomorrow because we're road tripping to, to Franklin mm-hmm. eight hours in the car mm-hmm. to just talk about whatever, mm-hmm. you know, for a long time. And I remember, having multiple drives with you, Stephen, like mm. that really, really intentional, meaningful conversation just mm-hmm. about personal stuff and work and very therapeutic. And it's, it's, it's very rare that you get that much time to just talk mm. or the plane ride we had to Maui, mm. you know, we're coming mm-hmm. up with creative business mm-hmm. ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, those things are really special too, um, that are, that can be built in to the work life as well mm-hmm. or, or the, the lunch we had at the factory in Franklin, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, carving out that intentional time is honest. Yeah. Like we know the three of us, <clears throat> some of the most special, meaningful conversations in business and our relationships with those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And knowing that that's what we're going to be discussing during that time too. Mm-hmm. Like the intentionality of the Maui trip was very much like, okay, mm-hmm. well we're going to work here, mm-hmm. even though it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. For for me in particular too, I'm going through this whole reckoning in my life that I've, you know, shared. Have I shared it on the podcast yet? Mm. Like the whole correlation of discipline and running to my business life. Mm. It's I'm making a short film about it right now. Mm. We're in the process of writing and concept mood board and everything uh, with with Cyrus, my new employee, mm-hmm. who I didn't, I don't know if I've brought up yet on Rally Caps, who's unbelievably talented and just incredible. Uh, the whole the whole idea of the film is like discipline across the board. Like just always saying yes to discipline can lead to so much more fruit. Mm-hmm. And saying yes to discipline in only one part of your life and then slacking off in another, like how unproductive and messy that can become. Mm -hmm. Where it's just like you're idolizing this one thing. So for me, for so long, it's just been like, I'm gonna be so dedicated to running, but I'm just gonna be a couch potato for this amount of hours on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna kind of be useless. Yep. And putting things off and procrastinating with housework or dishes or whatever. But saying yes to the hard thing is a practice that I do in this physical task Mm -hmm. of running. 
So why can't I also say yes to the hard thing over here as well? It's not, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Like it's so not easy to say yes in this other thing. But if I do, the reward of saying yes to that hard thing is just as, if not more rewarding than accomplishing the running goal. Yeah. Uh, absolutely more rewarding on a personal front if it's with my family or if it's with our work lives mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and continuing to, to say yes instead of saying yes to the procrastination. Mm -hmm. so for me, that's been insanely transformative where it's like I instead of saying, no, I'm too tired, it's I know it's hard, but yes, because of what's going to be on the other side. Right. You guys uh, familiar with Jocko at all? Jocko Willink? Yeah. Yeah. He's got this legendary phrase, thank you, um, called uh, uh, discipline equals freedom. I'm pretty sure yes. he's the guy yes, who coined yes, yes. that. And like, I've, I've always loved that because I think it's just so, it's so simple. It's People have so, been saying that on videos. Yeah. I didn't know that came from Jocko. Discipline equals freedom. Yeah. It's, um, it's incredibly profound and uh, it's simple, easy to remember. Just like a good slogan because too much of anything is too much. Yeah, and sure. having having structure, having boundaries, having discipline, they're all all those words are, are intended for the same thing is to actually give you more in your mm -hmm. life and mm -hmm. to bring more fruit out of the freedom that yeah. you that you have. Um it, yeah. I love conversations like this. These yeah. are always great episodes. Well, I think what's also really cool in that too is you you could you say yes to all those things, you get to to nighttime and you're ready to go to sleep and you're you're just so tired, but you should be. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you're uh, you're ready to rest. Mm -hmm. And then your your sleep isn't restless. Like you sleep very well. Mm -hmm. You sleep through the night, mm -hmm. and then you're ready to go for yeah. the next day as well. Yeah, I, man, I you just brought a searing memory back into my head. In college, I coined this phrase, earn your sleep. Mm. I was like, yeah, like I do. I want to feel like at the end of the day, I should be sleeping. Mm -hmm. I should be resting. Yeah. I should be recharging. Like, this makes sense. Like, it adds up. Like, I hit my strain goal, you know? Like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is appropriate. I balanced what came in and what went out and now it's time to rest for the next day and do it all over again. Yeah. Cause a lot of the procrastination leads to then staying up till one, 2 AM mm -hmm. watching whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you're so unrested yep. the next day. Yep. Yeah. Dang. That's a good episode. I feel mm -hmm. like this is one of those that we could have done like a three hour episode yeah. and maybe we will eventually yeah. we'll unpack it even further, but um, thank you so much for, uh, for listening, for watching this episode. If you could do us a favor and like it on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, uh, give us a rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the good places. Uh, we're really trying to bring the show to more and more people this year. Mm -hmm. We want to help people and share these conversations with a and wider audience. And we've been audience. weekly. And we've been weekly, y'all. We're doing it. We're sticking to our word. We call, we call our shot and we're doing it. 100 episode, 100th episode is happening this year, 2024. How many more do we have? What are we on, 65? This is going to be 65. Yeah. Pretty cool. Sick. We love you all. Thanks for being here. Talk to you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Later. Bye.